New charges have been announced for the man accused of killing 11 people at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. This on the same day that more victims of the shooting were laid to rest. Let's bring in Natasha Fata to explain. So Natasha, tell us about these new charges. What more do we know? Andrew, it was just a short while ago that this federal indictment was made public and in it it indicates that this man, Robert Bowers, who is accused of killing 11 people in that Pittsburgh synagogue on the weekend, is now going to face 44 separate counts on the federal level. That does not include the state uh, charges that are meant to come. But that's an increase from the 29 we had learned about over the weekend, now up to 44. We're waiting for further details on what those specific additional charges are. But remember, on the standing 29 counts, several of them were hate crimes. And as a result, if he is convicted, he could face the death penalty. We've heard again from the U.S. attorney who's managing this case, moving forward with the prosecution that, yes, they will be seeking the death penalty. And Robert Bowers is expected to be back in court tomorrow. So as the investigations move forward, one of the things that we know prosecutors are going to be looking very closely at is this man's social media presence, particularly on a website called gab.com, which marks itself as a place where it's sort of unfiltered. You can say whatever you like, and so then certain types of people tend to gravitate there, according to the critics, who are perhaps ones with extremist views that post violent uh, imagery and uh, language on there. And it's Around that, there's quite a bit of concern because reportedly Bowers' account on Gab.com repeatedly demonstrated anti-Semitic sentiments, including blaming the Jewish community for bringing migrants across the border into uh, the United States. He described them as invaders into their country, and he said that he didn't vote for President Trump because Trump had too many Jews surrounding him. So there was a pattern there, according to some of the people who've had access to that account. It has now been suspended, and Gab.com has been in touch with the FBI since the minute this thing uh, unfolded on Saturday. So uh, they say, yes, they take responsibility. They're trying to manage it. But every social media platform has violence and hatred and inappropriate content in it. They're no worse than anyone else. There are more funerals today for those killed during the shooting, including for the woman who grew up in Toronto. Tell us about that. That's right. We're talking about uh, Joyce Feinberg. She was born and raised in Toronto, eventually moved to Pittsburgh with her husband, where she was a devout member of the Jewish congregations there. And she, unfortunately, was one of the people killed on the weekend when a gunman opened fire. Many people from both countries have gone to Pittsburgh uh, for her funeral. She's a, she's a slight woman, but she definitely seemed to be quite powerful. And we got that sense from a long, lifelong friend who spoke with CBC News Network earlier. My first impression of her was this very warm, very quiet, demure person uh, who was very much a strong woman, except she was never a pushy woman. And so she stayed in the background so often until she felt she was needed and stepped forward and did everything she should and could. Andrew, two other funerals taking place today, one for Irving Younger, the other one for Melwin Wax. And uh, everyone, of course, in a horrible situation like this, you hear how wonderful these individuals were, how committed they were to their faith and to their community, and repeatedly you hear the frustration that they were taken away from their families in this most horrific way. Natasha, thank you. You're welcome.